Oh. That's what people want to hear, me groaning. Is it? Oh yeah. I feel like it's like, I don't know if it's just that I'm so hungry and it's like warm. I feel like it's so good every time. Well, you're a real lentil soup kind of gal. Good. What were you talking about? Well, I was gonna explain where we are. So we're in Southern California. We're no more than like an hour's drive from downtown Los Angeles. But up here in the mountains, you could hardly tell that we're a short trip from the largest metropolitan area in the United States. <laughs> Why did you do it so terrible? It's dripping on your... And we're doing exactly what you'd think we'd be doing. We're pursuing a, I don't know if you'd call it rare, but certainly a isolated little pocket of endemic fish up here. There's native rainbow trout in the small creek that we're fishing way up in this drainage that have been trapped here by landslides and have remained pure and intact over the centuries. Because this whole area, even though it you know, appears wild and pristine, we're just on the edge of a federally designated wilderness area. You know, it's, it's pretty pristine here, but um, the landscape has kind of hidden the fact that everything around LA has been pretty abused, especially in the early pioneer days. All of these water sources were dammed and used for drinking water and there were mining outfits up here and small towns and now it looks relatively wild but there's been plenty of opportunity for people to plant non-native fish in here downstream of this area there are um, non-native fish That's not really the point of this video. The point of the video is to talk about our collaborative film with our friend Scotty over at Wildfly. Maybe you've heard about this, maybe you haven't. It's called Hope in High Water, and currently it's behind a paywall. It's not something we do very often, both Scotty or us, but this was a bigger project, required a lot of resources, time, and money, and we decided instead of going the traditional route of hounding sponsors and trying to raise money for the production, we would just self-fund it and then see if our viewing audience, our fans on the back end could help support it. So we put it behind a paywall and we're using a different model than we've used in the past, which is basically a pay what you think is fair model. So if you spend anything over a dollar, you can have the movie, which means that there's no fixed price. We have a minimum of $1, but if $1 is all you can afford, then $1 is all you have to spend. If you enjoy the film and you think it's worth more than a dollar, feel free to spend more than that. And because it's a story about native fish, a portion of the proceeds from the paywall of this film will go directly back to the Western Native Trout Initiative. We're doing incredible work to help preserve and restore native trout waters throughout the Rocky Mountains. At the end of the day, any amount helps support the stuff that we make, both as individuals and together. And the whole thing's kind of an experiment to see if this type of funding model can work. So let us know if it's working. Ooh, marbled godlings. The film was a blast to make. I mean, if you're familiar with our work, you'll know that we don't often collaborate with other filmmakers. Not because we don't want to, but because it's just sort of the path we've been on. We've been making such specific work, um, had such specific stories we wanted to tell, and we're so used to kind of curating every step of that process, um, we haven't often reached out needing help or wanting to collaborate on anything because we've kind of dialed in this system between ourselves. So that's what made this project so cool was to get another filmmaker. Honestly, there was three filmmakers working on this. There was us, there was Scotty at Wildfly, and there was also Will Phelps, 
um, who shot most of it from Phelps on the Fly. A lot of you might be familiar with his channel as well. We've all been working in the same space, mostly as individual creators for the last decade or so. So it was really cool to bring all of our collective experience together and make a project collaboratively. I mean, from the, from the start, you know, from the planning process, to the development, to the shooting, and then the editing and the story building on the back end. And I think it's cool because anytime you get multiple or new perspectives from other creative people working together, a project will take on a new shape that you probably could have never envisioned on your own. And it's really cool to see how we each complement each other in the end. What the f is that? That's a goose. So when you're working together with someone else or multiple people, all these new perspectives are flooded into the work and there's so many different ways to tell a single story. So it's really rewarding and eye-opening to collaborate in that way. And in the end, I think the final product that we ended up with was something really, really special that none of us could have made on our own. We shot it this past summer in Wyoming. The goal was for us to take Scotty to some places he's never been before that are really, really special to us, but then to also push farther than we've been before and try and see some new places. And, you know, if you watch the trailer for the film or if you watch the film, you'll see that that came with all sorts of ups and downs and challenges and hardships. But in the end, above everything else, it's sort of a story about us and our friendship. For those of you who have spent a lot of time watching our channel, I think it'll be cool to see Amy and I in a slightly different light than we would necessarily represent ourselves. When you are in total control of how you represent yourself and how you tell a story, it's often easy to put up certain barriers or facades or, you know, if, I don't know, you think something you said or did on camera was goofy, you just cut it. But somebody else's perspective might be like, oh no, that was funny or that was an interesting insight into your personality. And you know, I think a big goal for Scotty with this film, and really Scotty is the, um, the mastermind behind the larger story here. You know, we all shot it collaboratively and we're all involved in it. But Scotty did you know, 95% of the major story editing here. It's really his film and his story to tell. He was interested in, in showing a little bit more of what we're like behind the camera or off camera. So I think you'll see a different side of Amy and I that would be a little more like if you were just hanging out with us as opposed to if you were watching one of our very sort of specifically curated stories that we make on our channel where although we try and incorporate bits of our personal lives into them, we're really trying to tell stories about places and fish and wildlife, focusing more on the natural world than our own personal world, whereas the story is really a, a people story. Um, both about Scotty and also about Amy and I. Another thing that was really rad about this project is we decided to do live in-person showings. We had two incredible sold-out shows, both in Salt Lake and Denver. Hundreds of people showed out to premiere these films and see it in person. We got to meet so many of you face-to-face, -face, which is something that's you know, severely lacking in the social media age. We have tons of interaction via comments and messages and emails, but so rarely do you get to actually shake someone's hand and uh, connect with them in person. And yeah, there's a video about that too on Wildfly's channel if you want to see how those premieres went and get a little bit of insight into the backstory of uh, the process of making this film. Every step from conception to shooting to editing to premiering it in person. You know, Hope and High Water will eventually be for free on YouTube for all to consume, but here for a little while longer. We're gonna keep it up there behind the pay what you think is fair paywall and hopefully recuperate some of the money that it took to make it and then pour that into the next project. And we can just keep making stuff like this into infinity as long as people like you wanna keep watching it. So please, if you like the stuff that we make, if you like the stuff that Wildfly makes, and you wanna support, head on over to wild-fly.com slash movie, a dollar or more, it can be yours forever. There's also some perks for people who donate more money. All that information is in the Wildfly video, which will be linked down below. Yeah, help us keep making stuff like this. I don't want it to sound like a threat, <laughs> where it's like, if people don't uh, buy this film, then we're gonna stop making them. But, you know, this stuff gets increasingly complicated and while, yeah, we're all doing fine and we're more or less living our dream as independent creators, it's tricky being an independent creator. It takes a lot of time, a lot of resources, and the model for the most part throughout our careers has been to do a lot with a little um, and live kind of what would be paycheck to paycheck, but we don't even get paychecks, so 
so yeah, help us out, support. The more support we get, the more we can make and the more stories we can hopefully bring to all of you. If you've seen it already, thank you so much. If you haven't, go check it out. Lots more other stuff coming on the channel. Hopefully more about that soon. Now I gotta get back to birding. So I heard you like wimbrels. Somebody wanna f***ing tell me what the difference between a godwit and a dowitcher is? I gotta get Amy. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot to mention, we actually made a full collaborative merch line with Wildfly for this project too. We did all the designs, a lot of people have been asking us for merch lately. Um, hopefully there'll be some of that stuff on our own website soon. But for now, next best thing, awesome collaboration, awesome set of merch. Check it out if you're into that kind of stuff. Bye.